paying bills, doing homework, filling out job applications. So much these days is done online. But what if you don't have access to the internet or a computer or don't know how to use them? Well, thousands of people in Mecklenburg County are in that situation at this very moment. Elsa Gillis investigated the significant impact it's having on some families and what's being done about it. Do anybody scare? Do anybody feel like they can break the computer? All right, thank you for your honesty. One night a week, a small group of parents gather at this elementary school for a special six week class. One of them is Lisa Cornell. You're doing this for your children? Mm hmm. For my son. She has a smartphone, but no home computer or internet, which presents serious challenges for her son, his schoolwork, and her own ability to function in today's world. Sometimes, like, we have to go to the library, or we have to ask people, can you use their computer? So it can be real difficult and stressful. Do you think he notices that? Yes, he does, because he was like, Mom, can we get the Wi-Fi? I'm like, yes, Mom's trying to get it back on. But right now, with us having all the other bills, then it's kind of, like, not a big priority, but it is a priority. Their family is far from alone. It's estimated that 56,000 homes in Mecklenburg County, more than 14%, have no internet access at all. Another 7% only have mobile or dial-up service. And take a look at this map here. In these orange areas, 20 to 40 percent of homes have no internet in the pale red parts. That's 40 to 60 percent. And in these bright red areas, 60 to 80 percent of homes have no home internet of any kind. So really the west side, the north and the east are the ones that don't have a lot of connectivity. Beyond that, Lindsay Sipe says fast internet access is just too expensive or not available for some families. She's part of the effort to change that. You're on. Participants in this class learn the basics of operating a computer, emailing, and using the internet and Microsoft Office programs. When they graduate, they get their own laptop and Wi-Fi at no cost, all donated by community partners. It is case sensitive. For these families, it changes everything because they no longer have to sit at a library or fast food place to fill out job applications or do homework. It's not a good learning environment for, for anyone, let alone a child. The technology divide. Does Tanya Hardin used to feel that struggle. It, it, it's almost like it's a stigma um, to not. What do you mean you don't have a laptop? It's like you have to afford what you can afford. She recently graduated from the course, which she told me has allowed her to help her children and to get a job. She now has plans to get her master's degree online. How's it going? It's going good. Her job? I think technology and having connectivity to the internet and, and a working high quality device really can be the great equalizer. It helped me. It, it did. Um, I'm excited about my little laptop. I can stick it in my bag and just go on off. So it's really cool. It has changed my life. Well, so far, 95 people have graduated from the Digital Inclusion Institute there. It's available to CMS parents in the Project Lift Central, one learning community that's held at various schools, and their goal is to expand it.